right, so I just want to go over some really basic map elements. And we did this early on in the term. We talked about hierarchy and balance. But I want to go over that a little more now that you're really thinking about design. Um, one thing to think about is when you name your folders, um, put your name on them. Because I downloaded like a whole bunch of stuff, and they were all called Lab 11. And then I had a hard time knowing which one I'd already graded and which one I didn't grade. Um, and the same thing with the name of your, um, your, your uh, PDF and your MXD. Make sure that you put your name on them. That way, if I download a bunch of PDFs, I know whose work I'm looking at. So uh, several of you did, but a couple of you, you know, you just get focused on one thing or another. So one thing to think about is balance. So we're talking about balance of the image, white space, and balance of the map elements. So here's an example of um, a map that's not very well balanced. I can see that you know the, the margins are uneven. Um, this a lot more space on this side than that side. The whole US is kind or the whole North America is pretty heavy over to the left side of the map. Um, and um, that student name is kind of floating down there. So one way to think about that is, you know, what is the focus of the map? So cities of the US. And so that needs to be, that part needs to be more in the center. Um, I've got the same amount of margins on either side of this, of this map. Oh, well, rats. Um, and so just really think about that. Uh, the student name may be a little close here, but at least it's not floating down at the bottom. The title isn't floating way off the top. It's kind of anchored down to the top of the map. So that's one thing to think about is your hierarchy. So take a look at your map if I handed it back and just make a note. Because I've graded yours, and I'm going to hand them back to you. And you're going to get to see you know, what, those, what you thought of, of uh, if you and I are on the same page, or actually if you're on the same page as I am. OK. Um, color. So one of the things to think about is color is really powerful. And so that if you have big areas that are really dark, intense colors, they will take over your map. And that's kind of what you see when you look at the map. So uh, the ocean, a lot of people just kind of the default dark blue. And what you'll see is when you print it out, the dark blue is way heavier um, in print than it is online. And you know the whole continental US being dark green. Um, red is a really powerful color, so use that sparingly. And black, too, can take over your map. Um, black lines are really harsh. So here's an example where I've got that really dark blue background, Canada's bright orange. All of the line work on all of these polygons is dark black. And especially, um, that really looks harsh up here along these continental borders, which are uh, lots of little lines coming together. And then you just kind of have this black, gooby mass. So um, looking at that with a much lighter touch. Um, I've got uh, the lighter blue ocean. I took all of my line work down a couple notches from solid black. Um, uh, let's see, what else did I do? Oh, I took uh, the continents and Canada down to, to a lighter color, because my focus is the US. Um, and I actually tried to use, instead of a black line, a light gray line between the states. So that would differentiate between the roads. And I made the roads um, uh, kind of one value off of black for gray. So those, those aren't so harsh. The other thing to think about is readability. So you know, map of the US, um, OK. But you know, the, you want some more information. Map of major cities, a continental map of you know, uh, rivers and, and railroads, something that just adds some information when you look at the map so the reader knows what is the focus, what's this about. Um, so the elements, the things you have on your map are useful. Remember, one of the things you have to do is generalize with a thematic map. You don't need everything that is in your table of contents actually on your map. Sometimes um, the roads, I might have chosen not to put the roads on if I wanted to talk more about cities. You know, that would have been a, a call. But you just want to look and see how, how busy does the map look. Um, in, your, in your legend, do you have things in there that you don't need? 
So the background was the graticule, the lat long. He didn't need that in the legend. That was just kind of a background layer. So you can take that out of your legend. You probably don't need continents in Canada in your legend because the focus was the US. Um, you could label them if you wanted, uh, but you wouldn't really need them to take up legend space. Uh, and then the, map, the legend elements are readable. Do they have capitals? Did you take out the underscores? Um, did you make real words out of those shapefile names that are somewhat truncated? Um, we'll talk more about the north arrow because it's not always necessary, but it's a good it's a good practice to struggle with where to put that north arrow and how to deal with that. When you look at your scale, you want to think about are your units even? Is it 50, 100, 150, or is it 52, 107, 1,008? Um, you can adjust that scale bar so that those units are even. And are you mapping in uh, units that make sense? If you're zoomed in on um, a city, do you need miles or do you need feet? Um, if you're zoomed out to the continental US, you don't want feet in your scale. You want miles or kilometers, something like that. So you can make all of those choices and you need to just kind of take a look at that. So here's an example where I took uh, the title major cities of the continental US. You can't just say US because people from Hawaii and, can't, and that other place, uh, Alaska, <laughs> they get really offended if you just say the US because they are part of the US, although there was some presidential concern around that. Anyway, um, and then you can see that um, I've, uh, in my legend, I've really simplified it to city, major roads, river, lakes, and United States. I don't need the continents and all that other stuff in there because those were just background pieces. Um, my scale bar is down, I adjusted that to be 1,000 uh, miles rather than, I think this was set at 1,080 as the default. It just came in that way. Um, my legend is simplified. I also put a background on my legend. Um, one of the things, if this legend box is hollow, that graticule line runs right through it. And so that gets a little distracting. And so what I did was go into the legend properties, and I, cho I chose frame, and I chose a light border, and then I wanted that just to be the same background as the ocean. So I picked my ocean background. And then you'll notice I put a gap. Um, if I don't put a gap on this, the line around the legend line just touches my legend boxes, and then it gets a little hard to read. So I put a gap in the border and a gap in the background. Um, let's see. And then the last little piece to think about is the printable area. So one thing that will help is if you look at print preview and see that things actually look like you think they're going to look. Um, you need to allow for about an eighth of an inch on your map that you cannot use. So um, this person on his MXD, this looked fine. Uh, well, this person, I did this. Anyway, st student name looked like it was going to show up on the map, but when I looked in print preview, I can see that it printed off, and when I print the map, it's even worse than that. It cuts off a lot of stuff. So one way to think about that is you've got guides on your MXD, um, and you can kind of get a sense of don't put anything beyond these guides um, so that you can, can kind of mask out that, mask that area out. Um, the only problem with this is the guides are snapping lines. So, so when I try, when I put the guides in and then I tried to move the student name up, it kept dropping down and trying to snap to the snapping line. So sometimes I don't leave those on as, as edge guides. I just put them on when I want to snap or line things up. Um, so the snapping line would be really nice if I wanted all a bunch of text or different things to line up right here along that line. So it's, it's pretty helpful for that. So um, first map, you guys did awesome. I was so excited to see all of these in. But the next couple maps, I, I'm going to post this and just want you to really think about these elements because this makes the difference between somebody who looks like they know what they're doing and a map that's going to take a lot of critique because it looks like an amateur, right? And so you don't want people stumbling over your map and trying to go back and forth and figure out what you're trying to say and they can't see this and that. You want it to be really clean and to tell the story that you're, that you're trying to tell.